in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Whoever loves and misses his home more than the future, go back. And the Bible says about 20 or 22,000 people went back. That means everybody was there, hey, we'll make it. But some were already dead on arrival. They went back and he said, there are still too many. Test number two. He told them you will get to the water brooks. The water brooks was not at the beginning of the journey. You would have to make some progress. And he says, study their behavior in the presence of that water those who bend and lap like dogs those are the ones that i want you to keep those who sit down and properly drink like human beings let them go back home do you know what that meant if you watch a dog and as it takes water it never takes water sitting or lying down it means and I'm, I'm aware that i still have somewhere to go this is a momentary success by the time you get to the water brooks after walking for a long time that is a sign of results now you have gotten water to quench your thirst and he said those who sit down that means they have camped i'm not standing up again let them go home their attitude those who lap like dogs that means they still have the sense of vision that this is just a momentary blessing but the real journey is not to i didn't leave my home to come and drink water i le left my home to go and defeat the midianites and if i find water on the way thank god but i will not come there and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you prophesy to yourself and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you price number two the price of unbending focus unbending focus can you still remember the vision of your ministry or you are forgotten can you still remember the vision of your organization can you still remember what you wrote on paper some of you have even misplaced the notebooks where you wrote the visions that govern your life because as at the time you wrote it you didn't have a business as at the time you wrote it you didn't know you would be this great you wrote many things there now you cannot even find the book buy another one and start again if the words are really precious you honor them by writing he says write for these words are faithful right they are true hallelujah mm. if you don't have a vision for your life and the things that you are doing life will give you many visions useless visions that are inconsistent with the blueprint of your call for someone god is speaking to you get back go back home and open that notebook the way this ministry is going is that what god told us we started well but on the way they said if you are going like this you'll be hungry and he said so which one works now they said let me tell you the one that works now do this do that and you are veered off from what god told you and your covenant with god are we together on bending focus we need to become people of focus so that you are not distracted thank God for the great things but you must be at your vision thank God for food thank God for the blessings that follow destiny but never be distracted by them I listened to a video I watched a video years ago 
I think it was by late Steve Jobs. It was a video that they did in 1992 or thereabout. And it was then, you know, um, they were really very small. And he was doing a little training for some of the senior executives of his corporation then. And I listened very carefully to what he told them. He told them that our goal is, you know, I can't remember exactly what he said the goal was, but there was no mention of money there. There was no mention of fame there. There was no mention of reaching the whole world just like a human effort of becoming famous. They were never part of the goals. The goal was to be able, based on what they said, to at least be able to contribute to make the world a better place by offering whatever it is that they were offering. I said, no wonder they became great. For someone from beginning, you say, this life, my share, it must come. That's your goal. And you find out you won't go far that way because already, you are already at the corridors of compromise because the goal is not, the goal is not pure and not, um, the goal is not superior enough to guide your life and ward off distractions. Number three, is someone learning? The third price for greater and higher dimensions is the price of greater enlightenment. Oh, please settle and listen to this one. The price for greater enlightenment or the price of greater enlightenment. Galatians chapter 2. God is going to speak to someone now from verse 1 and 2. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord. Price number three, the price of greater enlightenment. Galatians 2, 1 and 2. Then 14 years later, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus also with me. I love verse 2. It says, and I went up by revelation. I didn't go up by suggestion. I didn't go up by what? I went up by revelation. Of course, it has its literal meaning there to explain what he was doing. But that, that is a prophetic expression there. I went up. In this kingdom, we go up by revelation. I went up by revelation. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. It has become an anthem in this house. 8 and verse 2, 1 Corinthians. If any man think that he knoweth anything, he says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. The price of greater enlightenment. Acts chapter 18 from verse 24 and 25. Acts 18. Remember a popular story? The Bible says a certain Jew named Apollos. He was born at Alexandria. An eloquent man and mighty in scriptures. The Bible says he came to Ephesus. And then the man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Being fervent in spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Let's read 26. The Bible says, one time he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. The price of greater enlightenment listen if you want to rise higher in life you must contend for greater levels of enlightenment and i broke this enlightenment into two number one the first dimension of greater enlightenment you must contend for they are called the mysteries of the kingdom please write the first dimension of enlightenment you must contend for you must contend for higher and superior levels of the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 11, for it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom 
we discussed this already knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof on earth so that's the first dimension of the greater enlightenment you must know the mysteries of the kingdom what are they the spiritual secrets by which dominion is activated through it's important for you to know that dominion does not just happen authority is not only is it doesn't just work arbitrarily it is on the strength of the mysteries of the kingdom that we command dominion in this earth but the second dimension not many believers have paid attention to it is called the law of life and the law of human nature the law of life and human nature listen there are superior levels of greatness and there are dimensions in this kingdom and in the cosmos that if you do not understand the laws of life and the laws that govern human nature you can call them the laws of the cosmos there are laws that operate in this earth failure to know them you will get into all kinds of trouble when you are dealing with the mysteries of the kingdom you will learn the laws of prayer and priesthood is that true you will learn the law of giving you will learn the law of meditation and speaking and all of those things but as wonderful as that is you must be able to complement it with the intelligence of the laws of the cosmos most people do not know this let me show you three scriptures Luke chapter 16 and verse 8 hear what Jesus said Luke 16 and verse 8 if God is blessing you say amen. amen he gave a parable of the unjust steward and here was the conclusion of that parable the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation he said wiser than the children of light he acknowledged that they were the children of this world under the influence of the cosmos but he says they are wiser than the children of light do you know that jesus began his teaching look up please notice the structure of jesus's teaching he began his teaching with what we call the Beatitudes. Are we together? Blessed are these, the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And then eventually, he switched into teaching them the cosmos, the world system. He taught them, he now began to give them enlightenment on how to live effectively in the cosmos. Matthew chapter 10, please. He began his teaching in Matthew chapter 5, teaching them on prayer, teaching them on several things, you know, righteousness and all of that. By the time we get to chapter 10 from verse 16, hear what he said. Jesus now, giving us the wisdom of living and excelling in the cosmos. He said, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. One of the few times in the Bible where Jesus will recommend understanding the serpent. The serpent has always typified Satan, evil, and disaster. But when it has to do with the intelligence, please keep that scripture, of excelling in this cosmos, he says, make sure you learn the wisdom of the serpent and yet be as harmless as doves. 17. Give us 17. It says, but beware of men. That is already a very strong instruction he's telling you. Beware. There is something about the human nature in the world that you are living in. Don't just be a prayer warrior, a fasting giant, a revelation giant, and then don't sustain wisdom. Please look at me. Let me teach you this. My precious people, hear me. Many believers are completely ignorant as far as the intelligence of dealing with the cosmos is concerned. And it has cost us many things beyond our imagination. There are laws of human nature. There are laws that you must know. It is true. For instance, I've taught you one of them, the law of seasons. Is that true? That no season remains consistent. Seasons change. It is a law that operates while the earth remains. Is it not in your Bible? Seed time and harvest. You will never have seed time alone. You will never have harvest alone. You must know how to take advantage of seasons. When you see the rainy season for us in Nigeria here, I told you, remember the law of seasons? Every rainy season comes with a letter from dry season. I am coming. 
and every dry season comes with a letter from rainy season i am coming if you enjoy the season and don't collect the letter and read it you will be in trouble every time you see evil it is because there is good it's called the law of polarity every time you see darkness is because there is light male female god himself designed that law I'm not talking about some, some Scientology and some demonic thing. I'm talking of the wisdom of the cosmos. Jesus here is telling you, understudy the serpent. There are men who have taken advantage of that season. Even animals and ants that don't have conferences, they are not filled with the Holy Ghost. They don't pray in tongues, but they have taken advantage of the laws of the earth. And with it, they have animals have never experienced ants that we know. We, we have not seen them gang up together to say there is famine because there are laws that they operate. They don't have an advantage we, as far as we know. We know they praise God because the Bible says everything that has breath, let it praise the Lord. But we don't know about prayer. Are we together? Human beings are the only species that are so disoriented. The animals, are, to, the Bible, to the point that the Bible says, Oh sluggard, go to the ant and learn. That they do not have a king. In other words, there is problem with structure. And yet in it, they still excel. The wisdom of the cosmos. There are many natural laws that govern our world. Gravity is not just a spiritual law. It is also a natural law. It is because of the awareness of it today. We have come into that awareness and we have built things around it to our advantage there are many things you have to know about life and the nature of men is, is, is someone learning now i wrote here for instance you have to understand the principles of cause and effect it will guide you in addition to the fear of the lord that you have if you understand that there are consequences for every action it will tame the things that you do there is the law of seasons the awareness of the selfish nature of men you can pray in tongues you can fast have spiritual understanding and then in addition when you now go to the work the place of work or your place of business there is an awareness that all human beings are not like those in your house you know most believers have been shielded from the reality of how life truly is they are used to innocent people they are used to you can keep your money in your house and come and see someone package it for you and say with love from your brother and some of us believe that the whole world is like that are we together you can be fasting and someone will cook for you and say this is to sow into your life and then for many especially christian families the moment their children have the honor you don't have to be evil to be exposed to the laws of life unfortunately when you are exposing people and teaching them the wisdom of the cosmos they will say it's not necessary after all i have god i'm going to show you something that will bless you is god blessing you already so many christian young people especially are very naive as to the realities of the cosmos as soon as they come out and they are no longer under the influence of parents or guidance or church maybe they relocate out of nigeria or they now get jobs or they get married or something happens that exposes them to the world they spend about the first 10 years of their lives paying the price of ignorance spiritually alive but very dead in terms of the wisdom of the cosmos so someone can come and say you know what i'm a nice person i love you very much how much do you have you say i have one million my father gave me and said he has settled me say just bring it i'm a very faithful person and they naively bring it because they say no it has to be god because this is how favor works most people do not understand the wisdom of the cosmos that the heart of man is desperately wicked that is a powerful information you should store as you explore this adventure of life it's not to make you suspicious it now creates a prayer request lord send good people to my life send destiny helpers to my life because of the awareness of that law are we together so the moment you hear that ah the earth is going to fold up you just know that based on the law of seasons the thing that is is the thing that was and the thing that will be thereafter you will find rest the only person who will close the earth is the one who opened it there is no there is nothing that will happen on earth that is enough to fold the earth like a curtain God will close the earth intentionally. It's not disaster that will close the earth. 
So no matter how bad what happens, you know, economically, politically, there will always be a way out. It, we are not the first. There have been dark ages in history. Is that true? There has been famine in history. Is that true? But there also has been abundance. Is that true? Just the knowledge of the law of seasons will give you the staying power through the storms in your life. So for this season, I do not have a job. This season, it looks like things are not working. But I understand, number one, the integrity of God. But even within the cosmos, I know that everything is transient. So rather than regretting over current seasons, I begin to prepare and program the seasons coming. Is someone getting blessed? So man of God, while you are looking at 10 members and saying, God, you can't do this to me. Not after all my days of fasting, you should know that the way God works, he works by the law of seasons. There is the law of time and chance. There is the law of process. The knowledge of these laws prepare you immediately. If you hold 20,000, that is not all you will hold. He's only training your hands to hold it well. Is God helping us? Believers are very ignorant. Let me show you something. In Acts chapter 7 and verse 22, there are two personalities in the Bible who have really, really surprised me. Number one is called Moses. Number two is called Abraham. I have studied their lives carefully. Are we together now? Because of the way they walked with God. And I found out that for every one of them, Look at Moses. I want to show you something that will surprise you. How many of you know that Moses' assignment was a purely spiritual assignment? It was the assignment of a deliverer. If Moses was in the New Testament, we will call him an apostle. And yet, look at the nature of his training. The Bible says God sent him to Egypt and he learned, he was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and deeds. Why did God subject him to go and learn the wisdom of Egypt? Whereas his assignment was just to bring people out and to take them into the promised land. Is that in your Bible? Give us Genesis 12. Ah, I love preaching. Give us Genesis 12. Let me, let me just drum this thing in my... Give, please give us Genesis 12. May God bless you. Thank you. Genesis 12 watch this now so God is asking God is asking Abraham to leave um, his father's house and all of that to a land that he would show him is that true now let me show you something very powerful give us from verse um, I'm trying to look for let's go to verse verse 10 Genesis 12 verse 10 Please be patient while I read. Now, remember, Abraham had had an encounter with God and God said, leave to the place of destiny. I will do this for you. You will become a father of this and that. The Bible now said there was famine in the land. Have you noticed that every time there is hunger and famine, where do they go to? This is true for Abraham. This was true for Joseph. This was true for Moses. Egypt is an antichrist place. They do not understand kingdom. In terms of kingdom come but they understand the wisdom of the cosmos and whenever God is training his people among the many things he does is he sends them to Egypt and say learn something from Egypt the symbol of Egypt is it not the serpent please talk to me so when he says be as wise as the serpent he's not just saying copy the snake he's saying there is a wisdom that comes with the cosmos give us that scripture please let's just walk it a bit have I lost you, media? And there was famine in the land. And Abraham went down to Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous. Now, this was a man who had spoken with God. You will think after an encounter with God, he should never feel the famine in the land. Your encounter, your altar of prayer, your altar of worship, it may still be rich. And you will be surprised. You will feel the effect of the happenings around the cosmos. Are we learning now? 11 it came to pass when he was come near into Egypt look at are you seeing the pressure 
of Egypt made him to start telling lies. He never told lies when it was his relationship with God. But as soon as he got into the system, the effect of ignorance on how to operate in the system started producing in him like a man of God will start well, not intending to bribe, not intending to do witchcraft. But as soon as hunger comes, he can arrange a conference to raise money. He said to Sarai, his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Uh -huh. Next verse. Please let's hurry up, media. Therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, they shall say, This is your wife, and they shall kill me, but you, they will save you. You see all these attributes finding expression? Say, I pray you that you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake. And that I will leave did he have to go there if you are going to tell that level of lie to go there why don't you just go down you go back and hunger will kill you but you have to compromise and go into Egypt are you seeing now the price for going into Egypt is that you must be prepared for compromise but if you withdraw you may keep whatever and hunger will kill you and you will die look at the dilemma that this man is in now is someone getting blessed 15 let's finish up let me read it here. These, these people, if I walk with them, we're going to be late. The king's officials told him about her and she was taken to his house. The Bible says the king was good to Abram because of Sarah. And Abram was given sheep. Look at the gifts that he was given. Are you seeing where he got his wealth from? Where did he get it from? In Egypt. His spirituality was powerful. But his wealth and dominion came when he went to Egypt. He entreated Abraham well for her sake and he had given him sheep, oxen and asses and men servant and she asses and camels and all of that. Let's read down. He says, the Lord now plagued Pharaoh. Are you seeing that now? Everybody look at this. This is powerful. My God. Now he goes to meet the king in Egypt, Abimelech. Is that true? And Abimelech says, there is something I'm looking for, but I understand that one of the laws of life is the law of exchange. I will have to entreat your favor. This is what I have. Something must leave me for something from you to come. Are you seeing now? The wisdom of Egypt. He didn't sit down and wish the woman like many of us would do. He said, no, I know that I have to give you something that is valuable that you need. That the table of destiny is the table of negotiation. It's not just a table of wishes. World leaders know this. So he says, let me give you gifts. I see that you are not very wealthy. I am wealthy. I need this woman you've told me as your sister. It took God to intervene. God had to say, yes. He started plaguing him because of Abraham's wife. Now that is the power of a relationship with God. After you have a relationship with God, when you go to the cosmos and Satan wants to take an advantage of you, the God who you have a covenant with will now speak for you like he's speaking. But already, notice, already the gift has been given and there's no record of him collecting it back. 18. Pharaoh called Abraham and said, What is this that thou hast done to me? Thou did not tell me that she was your wife. 19. It says, why say it thou that she's my sister? I may have taken her to wife now. Behold, take your wife and go, but not alone. Go with all the gifts that I brought to you. Are we together now? Go with everything. Verse, verse 20 says that Pharaoh commanded the men concerning him. They sent him away and his wife and all that he had. Now give us 13 verse 1. It will make a lot of sense to you now. Abraham went out of Egypt he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him to the south are we together so tell me please why did god send him to egypt from this story you read it what what did he really do in egypt there was something he needed for his destiny but it was found in egypt he went out of egypt Verse 2, Abraham was very rich in cattle. Aha. Uh -huh. Next time you read it, you know where it came from now. He was rich in silver. He was rich in gold. Let's stop there. Don't be afraid 
when God sends you to learn the wisdom of Egypt you don't have to be compromised it is the wisdom of the serpent you can learn and still have the dignity of kingdom integrity why because your relationship with God is still intact so he says you are a sheep in the midst of wolves you don't run away you have to wear the regalia of wolves to look like one but you know by heart that you are a sheep so you will register the company like other companies you will go for the board meetings too with secular people and antichrist people you don't run away waiting for only believers to teach you secular knowledge you will go to a university with hedonistic people and while they are teaching you still have the conviction of heaven are we together now <laughs> hallelujah it's very important for you to understand this the price of greater enlightenment i've had the honor and the privilege of learning the wisdom of leadership and even administration and it is not all the teachings i have a system of verifying and editing everything i learn albeit my heart is open to receive wisdom from people they tell you someone is a professor in harvard and oxford and yell it will be stupid of you to think they don't know what they are saying they may not understand spiritual things but as far as the matters of egypt is concerned they have something you need this is where the pride of christians come we hold our bible and we say yes but the truth is that some of us cannot interpret what is written there until we take advantage of the wisdom of egypt you do, you are not allowed to copy the lifestyle of egypt nor to bow to the gods of Egypt, but you can extract their wisdom. Are we learning? So for some of you here, in addition to your prayer, in addition to your fasting, in addition to what God has done, you may need to go online and learn about administration and leadership. A 30 minutes video on proper administration can turn your ministry to a new dimension the problem with the ministry is not spirituality you are doing well but you do not know how to multiply and preserve things there are ministries that their problem is financial management because the truth is they do not have the wisdom and the intelligence for proper planning it's not that God is not faithful but there is no system and this is even true for nations no wonder many unbelieving nations seem to have economic stability and have it they do they may not honor the god of heaven but my goodness you see the dexterity you see organization in those nations we can humble ourselves and learn when it has to do with the wisdom of the cosmos it is not unscriptural to learn albeit you submit it to the wisdom of the world and edit the part of it that directly does not promote kingdom come but there is a part of it that is important look unto abraham your father and to sarah that baby if you ever find out how abraham was rich he was sent to egypt the bible says talking about moses now give us that scripture acts chapter 7 and 22 it says that moses was sent and he learned he was learned in all the wisdom of the egyptians god himself allowed him I hope you know Moses was in ministry. Moses was not like Daniel, who was in politics. Do you know when Daniel went, I wish we had time, would have dealt with the story of Daniel. When Daniel went to Egypt, it's in your Bible. In Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8, the Bible says when they went there as slaves, Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat, not the king's knowledge. It was the king's meat he refused because it was given to idols. But he was taught the ways of the Babylonians. It's in your Bible. It was the king's meat he rejected because this one was offered directly to idols. But the wisdom of the Babylonians, he had it. And after 10 days, they tested him. He said he was 10 times better. Is it in your Bible? Could it be that there are many, many things in addition, not in defiance to spiritual laws, we must incorporate guided by the word of God and structured mentorship. There are laws of life. There are realities about the human nature that we must know and understand. 
otherwise failure will be imminent for many people for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom I choose the way So if Jesus says the children of this world are wiser than us, it means there is something we must learn. For God to use Moses, he sent Moses to Egypt. Moses spent a major part of his life under tutors and governors that were largely antichrist. Abraham was sent in Egypt and he came back and got wisdom and he was able to use it. Joseph, the same thing happened to Joseph. When Joseph went to Egypt, Joseph did not just go to Egypt and sat there. There were things he knew and learned, all for his enthronement. What of Jesus? Jesus came to abolish the law, but when he came, the first thing he did was to go to the temple. The same scribes and Pharisees who Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil, yet he submitted to them and he learned. The, it is written that he used to defeat Satan was learned in the temple. Are we together? Even though he was the word of God. Are you seeing the pattern there? The same thing happened with Paul. Paul who would later be used by God as a scribe and a Pharisee. He submitted himself to learn he was the doctor of the law. And then when he had an encounter, he did not waste it. There was a time where it was not prayer that saved him. He said, hey, I'm a Pharisee. Don't kill me. He had to use the wisdom. He had to use that wisdom. He said, ah, I'm a Pharisee. I have a right to be alive. Can I tell you, there are many roads that you will need in your journey to destiny. There are times where you will have to use the advantage of the wisdom of the cosmos. He said, do not be afraid. I have many people in that city. That is the basis of your security. There are angels, but as far as per your sustenance in this city, find rest. The, it is the, the numbers that will become your security. He said in the multitude of men is the king's honor. This is the wisdom of the cosmos. Most believers do not know and appreciate the power of influence, for instance. We reject it as though it is antichrist. It can be antichrist if not managed. And we have ignored influence to our detriment. If God is giving us wisdom, say amen. Amen. Let's hurry up. Hmm. Price number four. What is the fourth price for higher dimensions, greater dimensions? The price of greater contribution slash productivity. The price you want to be great and you want to explore virgin dimensions in the spirit and in life and destiny especially the fourth price is the price of greater contribution the price of productivity proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16 it says the gift of a man or a man's gift make it room for him and bring it him someone say bring it him the gift does not only make room it can transport you from one realm to the other one realm of possibility to the other it bringeth him before great men there's no way for him to get to the place of great men but his gift would bring him before great men hallelujah this is very very important in daniel chapter 5 let's read verse 10 let's look at how the lord exalted daniel in daniel chapter 5 now a little background when you read from verse 1, don't turn there. Let me just... The Bible talks about the son of Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar. Is that true? And the Bible says they had stolen vessels from the house of God. And they were making merry and, you know, giving the credit to the God of the Babylonians and all of that. Suddenly, a hand pierces through their place there and writes on the wall, Mene Mene Tekel Ufesen. And the king was disturbed. The Bible says he shook, his legs were shaking. And he called on all the astrologers and the sorcerers to come and help interpret. And sadly, they could not. And he was downcast. Are we together? Verse 10 now. You will understand it from there. The Bible says the queen, his wife now, 
by reason of the words of the king and his lords came into the banquet house and the queen spake and said O king live forever let not thy thoughts trouble thee nor thy countenance be changed verse 6 but next verse it says there is a man in thy kingdom in whom the spirit of the holy gods is and in the days of thy father's light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him whom the king nebuchadnezzar thy father said made master over the magicians look at the role they gave him he was master over what <laughs> and 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 this is the position he occupied in egypt verse verse 12 for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences, look at solutions, dissolving of doubt were found in the same, which same Daniel? The same Daniel that proposed that he will not defy himself with the king's meat. The same Daniel that called upon the Lord. Strong priesthood, but he was Daniel with this plethora of abilities and solutions showing of hard sentences dissolving of doubts were all found in the same person he said let him be called and he will show the interpretation next verse then was daniel brought in before the king and the king spake unto daniel art thou daniel art thou the children of the captivity of judah whom the king my father brought out of jewelry and 14 he said yes and he said, I have heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Remember, this was a hedonistic king testifying over Daniel 15. We're reading to 17. And now the wise men, the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read the writings and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the things. 16. It says, I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Why was he called into the palace? The solution, the extent of the solution he could provide. His level of productivity was so much. The king didn't want to bring him, but the wife advised him and said, if it's to solve this, your problem, there is only one man. The same thing happened to Joseph. Are you seeing the patterns now? Now, if thou can read the writing, and make known unto me the interpretation. What will be the reward? Thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about your neck and thou shalt be the third ruler of the kingdom. Instant promotion, the potential for promotion. But I love Daniel. Daniel answered and said, let thy gifts be to thyself. A man who is not blessed will not speak like this. He says, and give your rewards to another. Yet, because I know that dominion is a product of solutions, I will read the writings unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. There is confidence that competence brings. There is a level of confidence. If you are competent, I can tell you this, there is a level of confidence, not pride. Daniel the Great. Look at what the king was willing to offer him just for interpreting this i will make you the third in the kingdom now when you read this you will see i i don't have the time for us to read but daniel now told him something that we'll consider in maybe the next point he said listen your father died because of pride you too you are going to die because of pride the bible said that same night he was slain are we together let's read six verse one daniel seal daniel don't be tired of scripture it gives us wisdom it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. Verse 2. He said, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was what? First. Of whom Daniel was first. So even though he did not collect the gifts, of Belshazzar when Darius became king he lifted him no wonder when Shadrach Meshach and Abednego were suffering it was minus him I hope you know that listen believers we must get to a point where we place value on productivity 
if we do not place value on productivity it is going to affect us it is affecting Africa it is affecting even the church in Nigeria the Bible already says we are the light of the world we are the salt of the earth in addition to our priesthood we must understand the power of superior contributions and productivity let me tell you something your productivity can bring you to a position in one day where you will salvage the destinies of men and bring honor and glory to the name of the Lord the nation of Israel were, were preserved because Daniel through value rose to the position where he was second in command and under his watch God's people were preserved until there rose another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph are we together may God forbid it that a time will come in this nation because of lack of productivity they will shut down and clamp down Christian activities because of one policy and there will be nobody to speak can I tell you we can be effective priests but if our contribution is not superior to go beyond religion beyond race beyond the local environment we are going to remain small this is an apostolic message nations are built with a combination of priesthood and superior contribution not priesthood alone superior contribution hallelujah so that we do not get to a point where respectfully speaking look at what has happened to our nation and many nations in africa anything happens we become the victims of it whether it is policies migration policies whatever it is because the truth is with respect to the global table our contribution may be significant within a place but it's not people depend on the facts and the figures the figures don't lie if you contribute seriously as far as the table of nations is concerned there are certain statements that will not be made to you is that true that is why we pray that there will be men who are on fire for Jesus filled with the Holy Spirit but filled with superior wisdom that God will lift them are we together to be captains of industry that a time will come in this nation it is the church who will determine political leaders the church who will determine economic leaders but it's not just to shout amen we will keep saying amen and remain low because it will take contribution contribution is what legitimizes the door of greatness to open for you not sentiment contribution how many believers have been given projects construction projects they are on fire but they did a bad job because they will not train themselves and hide under the fact that remember we are believers i believe in spirituality but i believe in excellence that you deliver at a level that defies any that anybody who wants to speak against you if we had time to read Daniel chapter 6 you will see that by reason of his being exalted as one of the presidents there were a few people who were angry and the Bible says they came to check him using the basis of incompetence and they found him upright there was nothing they could get so they had to go to the issue of prayer the goal was to trap Daniel but he was not only spiritual he was so exceptional in his duty hallelujah value and contribution as a man of God the pulpit should not only be should not be your only jurisdiction of dominion if business people gather and you are to speak to them do you have something to tell them if diplomats gather together and they say please just a 10 minutes charge just to encourage them do you have what to tell them make up your mind to be competent it's a decision I made with myself and I have challenged people and you see when you make up your mind to be competent God will send those who need that kind of thing to you look at the men of David those who were distressed those who were in debt those who were confused David turned them into mighty men not just mighty men in terms of the spiritual context they were warriors with honor the Bible says one of them stood in the same position and held a knife and brought down 800 people and even when he he released the knife it refused to leave his hand it will not leave his hand that is a level of mastery koinonia please hear me in the name of Jesus in the area where God would want you to serve his purposes 
go for knowledge go for knowledge humble yourself and learn challenge yourself if you are in the banking sector be the best be exceptional i told you you don't stop till you serve kings you own a restaurant let it be the best you are a politician rise to the highest level that within your time of politics you bring great honor to the name of the lord developmental projects that it does not have to be whether you are a christian or muslim or anything in between that everybody can see and attest to the fact that this governor this president this minister this board member unbelievers can come unanimously and say sincerely if it is in terms of competence let's throw away this this person can deliver until we get to that point we will keep flattering ourselves with religious sentiments and it will not work our priesthood will prepare the heavens to favor us listen it is your assignment to be valuable and competent it is god's assignment to connect you to those who need it can and reward it are we together now you have to understand how it works it was daniel's assignment to be competent it was god's assignment to connect him to the king through his wife it was joseph's assignment to be competent it was god's assignment to give the dream The spiritual advantage will be wasted if you are not prepared. It is often said that favor is when preparation meets opportunity. There are many preachers who love Jesus, but they are not ready to speak to a global audience. They are not ready to speak to intelligent people. They are not ready to communicate the truth of the kingdom with wisdom and exactitude because we have not worked on ourselves. We have prayed, but we have not built ourselves. It takes more than just prayer and Bible study. Let me tell you, you to be able to build a ministry that flourishes, there are many other components. To be able to communicate to people, people are not stupid. They will not just come and listen to nonsense. You must be thoroughly furnished like a reed that has been taken out of fire so you are speaking and a ceo is listening to you a prayer warrior is listening to you are we together and even those who are not born again as let me tell you this without any sense of pride there are many many muslims and unbelievers right now who are connecting and listening to me they are listening with their heart open because even though they may not believe in jesus but there is a dimension of the truth that is life applicable they can use it for their businesses and come back with results at least they are coming close to the gates of the kingdom refuse to be incompetent and don't give any excuses for it they send you to deliver a speech to a board do your homework wake up in the night cross the t's and dot the i's you are human but you can be human to an extent that you are almost godlike competence is a possibility in the world of men let's stop giving flimsy excuses you are a leader nobody will follow you just for sentiments tribal sentiments sentiments of regions you must be competent to deliver people want to be proud of their leaders they can stand and say this is my pastor this is my man of god not bringing rubbish and commanding loyalty it will not work that way i love you or that's why i'm pounding on you we'll soon reconcile but for this one just get it into your spirit you will thank me for it superior dimensions in life and destiny access to the ears of kings and nations no it will not just come by priesthood alone in addition to priesthood a rich qualitative spiritual life there must be substance that you can deliver amen 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 I'm saying amen to what I've told you. That's my song. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. One more time. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Price number five, we're wrapping up. The price of strategic connections. What does it take 
to scale new heights in the spirit and in destiny price number five the price of strategic connections ecclesiastes chapter 4 please from verse 9 and 10 it says two are better than one two are better than one why they have a good reward for their labor that means your productivity is multiplied to the degree to which you are connected verse 10 it says for if one fall the other one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone when he falleth for he had not another to help him listen there are many kinds of connections in your life but there are strategic connections that define your life i'm going to give you two of them very quickly number one is nehemiah chapter 2 the first 11 verses we will not read everything the bible talks about nehemiah who was the cup bearer of the king Artaxerxes, that kind of name. I don't know why he didn't give us a shorter name. I will call him the king of Persia so that I can have my peace to preach. Are we together? <laughs> and it came to pass in the month Nisan, the 20th year, remember our king again, the king of Persia, that wine was found before him and I took up the wine. I gave it to the king. Now, I had not been before time sad in his presence. Nehemiah is speaking now. He says, when the king saw his countenance, he said, Nehemiah, why are you sick? And I, I mean, why are you sorrowful? I know you are not sick. That means Nehemiah was a faithful cup bearer. Notice the transition from a cup bearer to the one who will now build the Jerusalem wall. He looked at the king and he, the king loved him so much. Verse 3, just give us the verses I can read or explain whichever. It says, why should my countenance not fall when I am here and the place of my father's sepulchers? In other words, I am here and the Jerusalem wall has not been built. Let's go to verse 4. The king said, so what is your request now? Everybody says strategic connections. When you are connected to the king, it's easy for some things to happen fast. Strategic connections. The king said, so what should I do now? He said, I pray to the God of heaven, verse 5. The king said, if it, or he said, if it please the king, and if your servant has found favor in thy sight, send me now to Judah and to the city of my father's sepulchers that I may build it, 6. And the king said unto me, the queen was sitting by him, for how long will your journey be? And when will you return? So it pleased the king to send him. Watch what the king did. I want to show you the power of strategic connections moreover i said unto the king if it please the king let letters be given to me to the governors beyond the river that they may convey me over that means guarantee my safety and support me instead of meeting all the governors one by one i met the king who has influence over them and i said king give me a letter are we together verse 8 and a letter unto asaph the keeper of the king's forest that he may give me timber to make beams for the gate of the palace right and the wall of the city for the house that i may enter into and the king granted me according to the good hand of god upon me verse 9 it says then i came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters now the king had sent captains of the army and the horsemen with me say strategic connections that guy would have died in the forest he would have died in several places he knew all the people he would have to meet one by one and he said king you have influence if i have a relationship with you all i need is a letter and look at how the man jumped it he said get on my chariot he sent him with chariot so every time they saw him ah from the king yes sir please pass strategic relationships can shorten the time of your arrival to the next level there are many of us who are meeting people one by one and meeting gates and systems one by one we need to pray and say lord in addition to those you have connected with me with bring me to a point where i am connected to kings and gatekeepers in one day they will open a door for you that may take others 10 years are we together generally relationships are profitable but believe me to rise to certain levels in life there are certain strategic
strategic connections that will be needed in your life they will redefine everything about your life second kings chapter 5 let's read from verse 1 the bible talks about a man called naaman of the 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 host the 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 king of Syria he said he was a great man with his master he was honorable because by him deliverance had come to Syria the Bible says he was a mighty man but he was leprous let's go to verse 2 the Syrians came and they captured Israel and then a little girl was captured also who waited on Naaman's wife verse 3 now I want to show you something there she said unto her mistress would God my Lord were with the prophet in Samaria for he would recover you are we together Four. so he went in and told the Lord toss and toss this is what has happened let's go to verse 5 the king of Syria said go you see the letter again is it in your Bible now this is a story the little girl is saying my lord or my master or my boss there is a prophet a mighty prophet if you go to that prophet in israel he can cure you of this but i don't think you have the kind of influence to meet that prophet because he's a great prophet and immediately naaman would have gone and said i'm a captain of the army he would have been surprised you see the way elisha treated him he didn't even come out elisha was not a small man the prophets ordained the kings. So these guys were, they had their own pride and pedigree too, unfortunately. Are we together? Now watch what he did. To save him the burden of negotiations and all of this, this is the wisdom of the cosmos that believers must learn. The king of Syria said, go, I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and he took him all of those gifts. Verse 6. He brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, Now when this letter is come to you, behold, I have herewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. The remaining is history down to verse 11. Look at how easy it became for the king to be healed, for Naaman to be healed, because he had the endorsement of a great man's relationship. He went to the king and when the king was downcast the news reached elisha quickly and elisha said don't worry send him to me and he will know there is a prophet in israel to cut the long story short the man was healed could it be that many things that look hard in your life now is because the relationship that has the power and the influence and the capacity to accelerate it has not come the price for greater dimensions is the price of strategic connections strategic connections let me tell you the truth it is a good thing for God to give you influence and access to the hearts of kings because it will accelerate your journey economically and otherwise there are people who are heavily defended and blessed there are people who are heavily protected and supported because there are kings there are captains who love them there are men of god in this nation men of god in africa who is not just the pulpit that is protecting them god in heaven is there to defend them but they are they have the jealousy and the loyalty of kings across the globe nations will close and open again for their sake are we learning let me give us the last one so we pray I missed out on the story of the Shunammite woman. There's no time for that. We would have spoken about the Shunammite woman. The same Elisha who came to her and said, what should I do for you? Notice the woman. When she saw Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 4, you find that from verse 8 to 17. When she saw Elisha, she discerned that this was a great man of God. Immediately, she started preparing something to honor him. And Elisha came after a while and said, you've been helping me. What should I do? Should I speak to the king for you? He had that authority. King, help this woman. And that would have been it. Listen, not everybody is limited. This is a very, very sincere statement. Challenges are not general. They are limited. As much as people are suffering, there are people who with the same letter, that letter principle is still working till today in Nigeria and across the globe. There are people who may be ordinary people, but they will carry letters from superior voices with authorities and can take and say, listen, um, I just came to you. Who are you? 
I came with a letter. From who? So, 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 so. Ah, okay. Where do you know him? He happens to be my uncle or he happens to be someone God brought to my life. Are you sure? Let me see. Help this person, please. Give him all the support needed. Sign. We'll talk later. That's the end of it. So what are you looking for? I've applied visa time, 10 times. It has not worked. Okay, come back tomorrow. Drop your passport. Go. That's the end of it. Or, okay, there's a job given there, but I don't have a scholarship uh, for the master's program, but it's too late. We've closed the door. Well, so so, so person said I should give you. Please help him. We'll talk about your wife's issue tomorrow. <laughs> Everybody, including the king, has his area of need. The person who can solve the king's problem, are we together, can get the king's favor too, for himself and for others. Kings have problems. They can solve the problems of others, but there are others who can solve their problems. You need both in your life. The kings who can solve your problems and access to the ones who solve the problem of kings. The last one and we pray. Did someone get blessed in church today? So that by the time you are sharing the grace, you, it's a wiser version of you that now lives. You know what to look for. You know what to pray for. Your prayer life now is on fire. Your word life, your passion for God, but you can see the missing links. Ah, this is why my life has clamped down in one place. Are you ready for number what now? Number six, the price of humility. This is the last price. You want to rise to a higher level, the price of humility. James 4 verse 6. James 4 verse 6. Pay attention as we wrap up. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. Is that in your Bible? But giveth grace to the humble. Please give us, um, write for reference. We may not read it, but just write Daniel chapter 5 from verse 18 to 31. This was Daniel speaking to Belshazzar about Nebuchadnezzar and his pride. He said, your father fell because of pride. He exalted himself more than the king of heaven and he fell. And you now, his son, you are following the same step. What happened to your father will happen to you and he died and Darius took over. In James chapter four and verse 10, the Bible tells us powerfully the blessedness of humility. James 4.10 Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. This is a principle that I've learned for my own life. I've learned it by the privilege of relationship with the fathers of faith in this nation. Not just in terms of the spiritual dimensions, even in, in several areas. You know great people largely by the extent of pride and humility they are truly very humble people they will learn and learn again and learn from anybody you can see somebody you study some of these intellectuals abroad you can see somebody who is a professor par excellence listening to a little child talking to him and you'll be saying professor this and that you are wrong and you say oh really not i'm wrong you will meet me at the class no you will tell him I'm wrong and this is somebody who is a learned fellow and he will listen and learn. The same thing you see with very prosperous people. And I pray that this will become a culture in our hearts that as we rise, we will remain ever humble. God, you are the reason for all that I am. You are the reason for all that I have. Even though the nations praise you, uh, your workings in my life I acknowledge before you and before them that I'm nothing before you and God will measure a thousand cubits for you you are ready to go higher pride is a killer my precious people pride destroys and as we prepare to pray I want us to start with this prayer over pride there are some of us who pride has brought us to positions of shame and reproach right now. We are shadows of ourselves because we became full of ourselves. To acknowledge the God of heaven as the basis for all that you are and all that you have is true humility. Are we together? To remain ever humble before him. It is my prayer for myself 
it is my prayer for this great ministry it is my prayer for the body of Christ it is my prayer for you and everybody who I truly love and care for that humility will be a signature in your life that when people look at you and say why are you humble when everything is working in your life left right and center you have seen the faithfulness of God you will tell them that it's not just something I do mechanically it is a revelation it sustains the key to my next level pride is a demoter it will demote you regardless the position humility is a promoter it will lift you beyond this level I've handed to you tonight ladies and gentlemen people of God six keys that if you walk in keeping with these keys I give you a guarantee by the integrity of Scripture you will watch your life move from one level to the other first in your spiritual triumph and then your destiny adventure and then every aspect of your life these are the keys that the great have traded with that have brought them to where they are and continues to take them to levels virgin dimensions in the spirit virgin dimensions in destiny now thanks be to God the Bible says which causes us always to triumph let me wrap up again with Proverbs chapter 4 it says the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more Unto the perfect day. Please rise up on your feet. Please rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. Prayer point number one. Just two prayer points for tonight. Prayer point number one. You are going to ask the God of heaven that this this that was listed the six keys that represent the price for new and superior dimensions that the grace be given to you from heaven to walk in keeping with every one of these go ahead and lift your voice and pray the bible says now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them is someone praying i obtain grace in the name of jesus christ i obtain grace by the power of the Holy Spirit, I obtain grace in the name of Jesus Christ. The price of a deeper experience with God, the price of unbending focus, the price of greater enlightenment, the price of greater contribution and productivity, the price of strategic connections, and finally the price of humility go ahead and pray father I obtain grace I am set for the new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ I am set for a new level in my faith adventure a new level in my destiny a new level in the spirit final prayer point in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit acceleration to my destiny even for the next level go ahead and pray spiritual acceleration financial acceleration in the name of Jesus Lord bring me speedily satisfy me early even with your mercy greater levels of power greater levels of illumination greater levels in ministry greater levels in every area of my life i will excel in my priesthood i will excel as far as dominion is concerned wisdom to operate in the cosmos in the name of jesus christ in the name of Jesus Christ before I speak over your life to wrap up tonight's meeting let me make an altar call one of the greatest index to measure the success of any man of God and any ministry is the souls that come directly through your preaching to Jesus Christ soul winning in order of priority second only to your work with God is the greatest index for measuring ministerial success no matter what you have and do if souls do not come to Jesus even if it is one soul on account of the truths that you communicate then you have not done justice 
let's minimize movement i want to make an altar call there are people here from the start when i gave the first key and the first prize the price of a deeper walk with God. The Holy Spirit convicted you immediately. This is you he's talking about. I sent you to church tonight for this reason and to hear this. You are saying, Apostle, I truly need to make my way right with Jesus Christ. Perhaps you have never truly been saved. You came here by invitation or you have been here watching others saved and it has not really dawn on you that you should make that decision tonight is your chance and then for those who are saying apostle i want to rededicate my life i cannot truly say that my work with god is rich enough i know that i veered off and i need restoration we have just one minute for you wherever you are i want you to leave your seat and quickly come and stand right here quickly come and stand let's celebrate them as they come don't be afraid don't be ashamed jesus is calling on you wherever you are Keep clapping as they come. God bless you. Keep clapping as they come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You are outside. You are up the balcony. All of the overflows. And you are following at home. Watching by way of television or a rebroadcast. It is never too late. To make up your mind for Jesus. Koinonia is this the best you can do? Let's encourage them as they come. Young and old alike. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. If you are still joining them, please join them quickly. I want to lead you to pray. The salvation prayer the Bible says with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made even unto salvation thank you so much for the courage thank you for coming to stand boldly before Jesus and even before his people the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away and all of you who are out in front of your LED screens and someone who is watching from your home you're watching by way of television Congratulations for your determination to make this decision. As I pray with them, I want you to pray and follow through with the prayer. I only ask that you do it believing that Jesus is listening to you and that this decision will translate into a new life. For all of you who are in front, may I please request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender. And I want you to say this loud and clear. Please say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart and I desire to walk with you and to live for you right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord as my Savior and as my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life right now I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that I'm a child of God I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name please keep your hands lifted father thank you for this ones they have made these declarations of faith and I decree and declare by the authority of Scripture that your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life from tonight we declare that you belong to the family of faith you are recipients of eternal life you begin a walk with God that will translate into an excellent life here on earth and even after in the name of Jesus I bless you with the blessings of heaven and I declare for you that you begin a new walk with the Lord dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like, 
this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye